Hi, all you viewers. It's me, Tennis Ball. Remember the guy who got 8th place in the first season of BFDI? Which I think is a little unfair, but let's not get into the details about that. Anyway, today, I have an interesting message to tell you. If you live in the United States, and you're going to be 18 or older by November 2020, you should definitely vote in the upcoming presidential election, and all the local elections, and basically anything that can, you know, affect policy in, in your life or something. Uh, also, I feel like it's a bit infantilizing of me to, like, talk in this silly tennis ball voice when I'm talking about a real-world serious issue, so... Hi, here's me, Kerry Huang, in the flesh, as a human, talking face-to-face, -face, you know, as people. Um, and Tennis Ball can stay on the screen, too, because, yeah, he's there. Anyway, I feel like up until this point, um, with my YouTube channels, I rarely talk about real-world events, because often I sort of see BFDI as this fantasy world where you escape from real-world events, so it feels like the two worlds don't really mesh very well. But I think just given how important the upcoming election is, and just, I guess, you know, I feel like I want to use this little platform I've got to do something a little more substantial and good in the world. So I'm basically saying if you can vote in the U.S. election, and I know a lot of you are not from the U.S., but if you are 18 or older and can vote, then please vote. I feel like another reason I'm saying this is because every election cycle that happens, it's always reported that the younger demographics have much lower turnout than the older demographics. And now that we're at a point where I think Gen Z and millennials make up the majority of the US population, it feels really frustrating that this giant cohort of people are still having so little of their voice being heard through the election and through the vote results just because they don't go to the voting booths. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I know that a lot of people in the BFDI fandom are young, and you're, you're younger than 18, so there's not much you can do anyway. So if you are a kid, just go enjoy your childhood, play games, do Fortnite, whatever kids do. Um, but I think there's a lot of people in the BFDI fandom, or Carrie KH, you know, however you discovered this channel, who are around the same age as me, who sort of grew up in this sort of YouTube era, and are now young adults, I'm talking to you, okay? So if you're in that age demographic, 18 to 25 or something, don't do this with your ears, you gotta do this with your ears. Okay, that sounds so, ugh, like, preachy. So if any of that sounded preachy or like stuff that you've heard a billion times before, I apologize. Um, and I definitely don't want to repeat the exact same words that other people have said. So in this video, I want to tell you a personal story that happened to me. And because it happened to me, no one else has told it and you've never heard it before. So here goes. Back in February, I think, of this year, this is when the primary elections were happening. Um, and I, I believe I requested a mail-in ballot to fill out in my own time, and then I could turn it in at one of the, like, vote stations on the election day. This was before mail-in ballots became a big controversy, and that's what I did back in, like, 2016 and 2018 as well, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Anyway, um, so on election day, Stanford, I was living at Stanford, and Stanford has this one building in the middle of a food court called Treseder. And they were using the Treseder Lounge as the voting station. So it was this big room, you know, you could fit hundreds of people in it, where they set up a bunch of voting booths. But they also set up a bunch of tubs where people who had mail-in ballots like me could just drop them off. So really, it only takes like a minute to get to Treseder and walk into the room, drop off your ballot, and then walk off and you're done with your day, right? Assuming that you've already filled out all the bubbles and you signed your name and all that. So it feels like it would be super easy to just do it. So I think early in the day of election day, I filled out my vote and I, you know, wrote down everything. And I went to Treseder with a friend of mine. 
and she, the friend, she did the voting the traditional way, like where you wait in line because there was a very long line with dozens of people. And then you cast your vote by writing it in the voting booth that no one else can see. Now, that's the traditional way. But I had the mail-in ballot. And for whatever reason, I can't remember now, I decided not to put it in the tub right then and there. Like this was months ago. So there's probably other things happening in life that I can't remember. But anyway, I remember waiting for her for about 15 minutes to go through the line and then she voted and then she came back and then we left and we went on with our days and did other things. And then my plan later in the day was to watch a movie with a friend at a theater that was about 10, 10 miles away from Stanford, then come back and then drop off my ballot at Tresider. Okay, so I took an Uber at around like 3 p.m., I think. Oh, by the way, I, I, this is very important. They announced that the voting station at Stanford would only be open from noon until 8 p.m., and I was thinking, that's essentially all day. That's an eight-hour window. So, you know, that, that means it's super flexible. It, you don't need to really worry about that. So anyway, around 3 p.m., I take an Uber to go meet this friend at this theater 10 miles away from Stanford. Um, and it turns out, right around when I get to the theater, they ghost me. And they just don't respond to my text messages for a while, which is like a super not cool thing to do because you know now I'm in this other city and there's no one else there so like yeah I felt kind of like I got the short end of the stick um so you know I was really angry about that whole situation but I was like you know what I'm not gonna let this uh shitty situation ruin a fun day so I decided to like just explore the city for a little bit a little bit and have dinner there just on my own I know it sounds kind of like loner like but you know, we can all admit that things like that have happened to us. There's nobody who's never had dinner by themselves, right? Okay, it happens. Anyway, um, I wasn't quite worried about getting back to Stanford in time to cast my ballot because I had allotted at least an hour to get back, and it's only 10 miles away. But, you know, since I was using Uber on my phone to as my transportation back, I called the Uber and the Uber took longer than I expected to arrive. And then once I got into the Uber, it took longer than I expected to get back to Stanford because there was lots of traffic. I'm not really sure why. So I remember I was checking my phone while I was in this Uber car and it said 750 on it. And I was like, what? How is it already 750? I thought I allotted over an hour to get back before 8 p.m. And I was like starting to get nervous. So that was not a good situation. I didn't want to tell the driver, like, go faster, because um, I didn't want to put pressure on them. But basically, when they got to Stanford, it was like 7.58. I remember it was like almost, almost 8 p.m. So I was like, I'm just, I got to run to the, the Tresseter and turn in my vote, because my vote was still sitting in my backpack, because, you know, I take my backpack everywhere or whatever. So when I got to Tresseter, um, here's the big reveal of the story. It was 8.04 p.m., which means that voting had technically ended four minutes ago, which is super embarrassing on my part. And I texted my family and they were super embarrassed as well. Like, how did I let this happen to me? But anyway, here's what happened. Because only four minutes had passed since the, I guess, voting period had ended. This makes it sound like twow, but whatever. Um, there were still long lines of people voting the traditional way. And they were going to let those people stay in line because I don't think it's ethical to cut to, to tell people who have been waiting in line for minutes or hours to leave. So they were still in line. Um, and there's still lots of government employees telling people where to go and where to turn in their votes. So there's a lot of activity still happening at Tresseter. But I had my mail-in ballot, and I tried to just dump it into one of the buckets that was still there for mail-in ballots. But then the government employee who saw me there was like, no, you can't do that. It's like voting closed four minutes ago. You're too late. And I remember trying to negotiate them with them about this issue for like a minute or two. But eventually I realized like this just wasn't going to work. Like I wasn't going to be able to convince her to count my vote because there must be some regulation or rule that means that like I just can't uh, deliver my vote. So in the end, my vote was not counted. I never turned it in. And that really made me feel bad because... 
you know, the right to vote is one of the privileges you have as a U.S. citizen, and it only comes around once every two years. So you should really take advantage of it while it lasts. And the fact that I missed it by four minutes because of traffic or because my Uber took longer than I expected or because I got ghosted or whatever, like it, it's just so many like stupid things that I let happen that I, I should have prepared for that led to, you know, me throwing away, away my right to vote just made me feel like, oh man, I'm just an idiot. I'm a fool. And um, I think that like, I'm trying to think why I didn't just get in line and, and try to cast a vote the traditional way. But I bet there was something like, oh, you have to fill out some forms and, you know, register to vote the traditional way. And like that was closed as well. So, you know, if I could have voted, I would have. But basically, after that whole incident happened and after I told friends and family and they all kind of like laughed at me, but also felt bad for me, I sort of vowed to myself never again. Basically, if I ever got the chance to vote again, I'm going to take it and I'm not going to let these silly quirks of my daily routine stop me from getting that. So given that that was the primary election and the general election is much more important um, and that's coming up, I'm definitely going to vote in that, of course. And I hope that some of that energy of like, you know, we got to vote if we have the right to, I hope that can rub off onto some of you. Um, because I'm definitely feeling it. And I think that like, that came from my personal experience of being super silly like that. Uh, yeah. I, okay. So I, I, I've done this video like two takes. So I don't know if I already said this, but, um, yeah, I already said about like, like, you know, if I only convince one person to vote who wouldn't have otherwise, then it's all worth it for me. Um, yeah. And the other thing I was going to say is that I, like my personality is like, I don't like to divide people and I don't want to split. Um, I don't want to say anything that's going to alienate half of the audience watching. So that's another reason why I never bring up these topics in any of my videos, but I hope we can all agree that it is just universally a good thing if more people have their voices heard in these elections, because I think ideally everybody's voice would be heard. And I know some countries have mandatory voting. I mean, that's a whole other discussion and I'm not saying that we need to have that, but the closer we can get to um, the voices of the entire population, not just a sample of the population, the closer we have like an accurate uh, a picture of you know what the population actually wants. So the more votes you cast, the closer you get to that true population voice. I, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying at this point, but I think I know, what, uh, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah, I guess that's the end of this video. I don't really know what else to say. Um, yeah, and I know that a lot of US states, you can already, like one, you can check to see if you're registered to vote already. I'll, I'll put links in the description, but I know that early voting starts in a lot of states around October 5th, and that date is coming up really fast. And that's why I wanted to make this video now because, you know, a week will go by before we know it. And I don't want like too many weeks to go by before I can even make this sort of announcement video. So while it's still September and while the election is still over a month away, I want to just kind of, you know, put my flag in the sand and say like, you know, I, I have tried something to um, encourage people to vote before it's too late. Because in 2016, I didn't do anything. Um, to encourage people and I think I don't want that to happen again yeah okay so this is this is my human -y video of the day I know it's quite long it's definitely longer than what I did yesterday which was 12 seconds oh embarrassing um, and then I'll probably you know make other silly videos after this one but yeah thanks for watching I guess we could finish it off by having tennis ball say um, I don't know what what is she what should he say Go vote right now. Have your voices be heard. And I will see you all later. Now I gotta go have my picnic with golf ball again. Goodbye.